Now, over the course of the past couple of years, we have seen a lot of different changes being applied to Star Wars, all thanks to John and Dave, really borrowing a lot of elements from Star Wars Legends and throwing it into the current Disney canon, and how a lot of that is going to coexist in the future seasons of Mando, Ahsoka, and even brand new shows that have yet to have been announced that will be, by the way, at Celebration and D23. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. Now that brings us to exactly what John and Dave are up to, is that we already know that they openly stated that a lot of these shows are going to change the events of the sequel trilogy movies. It's going to change how you see them, how you watch them, and the lore is going to be shifted around to better suit the plans that they actually have revised for Mandalorian as a whole. Now, with that being all said, we know that J.J. Abrams, all right, really has been a lot more talkative recently for the past couple of months since he has no intentions of ever coming back to Star Wars again. He's been a very honest person lately. Some fans may think he's full of it when it comes to that, but who knows. But he has been very direct with the fandom, really talking about everything that there has to do with the sequel trilogy movies, what he actually tried to get Kathleen Kennedy to do that she absolutely refused to do and just disregarded everything. And that brings us to what J.J. Abrams had to say most recently involving Kathleen Kennedy at no surprise, and a big thing to do with the sequel trilogy films. So let's dive right into all of this because he unveils more about Disney's way of thinking at the time when it came to the Star Wars movies as well as Kathleen Kennedy's thought process. Now, with director J.J. Abrams refusing to ever return to Star Wars again, he has been a bit more direct and honest with the fans as of late when being questioned about his experience with the sequels. In a recent interview, J.J. went on to state the following to the fandom. One thing that I really had a problem with with Miss Kennedy when we were working on the first and last film was that she wanted to resort away from any kind of violence to the main character, Rey. I always loved the tradition of Skywalkers losing a limb or the main, and, or the main protagonist losing a limb or a hand, whatever it may have been, and it's something that I planned out to happen to Rey at some point at the end of The Force Awakens, during her duel against Kylo Ren. What really got me personally annoyed was how Kathy and even those that supported her wanted no kind of violence toward Rey. I had pitched this idea that Kylo was going to dis dis dismember her right at the end of, of course, The Force Awakens and dismembering her arm during their snowy battle on Starkiller. So I said, let's do this. Let's give the character a tradition in Star Wars. It's something expected from fans. It was completely thrown out the window from me, and I took offense to that at the time. I even said, well, if we can't do that, let's keep the tradition at least with Kylo. Kathy had told me the most we will do is give him a cut or some kind of minor injury to his body to not scare people away. Now, let me just pause here for a second. Now, the thing about this that I find very contradicting is Kathleen Kennedy wanted no dismemberments to the main characters like Kylo or Rey. None of the characters getting dismembered, losing a hand, losing a, a leg or an arm, whatever it may be. This tradition that has happened throughout the entire Skywalker saga was literally cut off <laughs> and literally just put aside all because of Kathleen Kennedy. Now listen, I know it may sound ridiculous to some people, like, expecting and wanting so bad to actually have a character to lose a limb. I know it does not necessarily serve the story strongly in a way, but it's a tradition. It's really something that you expect in the Skywalker Saga-oriented movies, almost as much as how you expect to really see some certain parallels in there. And I think the most that we really got out of this when it came to dismemberments was that we got Snoke cut in half, losing his hands on the throne as well. And that's about it. You know, sure, you know, there was a little beheading <laughs> in, the, in the Rise of Skywalker in the beginning where Kylo slams it on the table, but we never really got anything like that to the main protagonists. And J.J. Abrams is really exposing this. He's putting it forward that... 
this was supposed to happen in his script, and even the script before him by Michael Arndt, where Ray was intended to lose an arm at some point, and was really going to actually follow that tradition that Anakin fell into and that Luke fell into as well. And basically when that fell through, when that never happened, JJ at least wanted Kylo to suffer the same tradition that Luke and Anakin went through. And Kathleen Kennedy said, no, let's not do that. Let's just put a scar in his face or give him some kind of minor injury. And then come The Last Jedi, they even wanted to dial things back further by giving him a less gruesome scar. So it just goes to show you that Kathleen Kennedy, you know, at the end of the day, just really does not want to do anything that really kind of would shock the audience in the wrong way. In her mind, that's what she believes would have happened if, let's say, Rey or Kylo lost a limb or something like that. So, that brings us to the next thing that he went on to state. He goes on to state, this is something that I tried as executive producer to also make happen in The Last Jedi with Rey, and we, al when we almost made it happen, but it also got shot down by Ryan. It's something I was dying to do to give Rey some kind of weakness to grow from and something fun to do for her aesthetics with a biomechanical limb. That design, of course, was specifically for her. Now, once again, like I said before, I understand it's not the biggest problem in the world to not have the main protagonist losing a limb, but the fact that Kathleen Kennedy thought that this was going to scare audiences away if Kylo lost a hand or whatever it may be or Ray lost a hand or a limb or whatever, right? That it would have scared the audiences away. This is the kind of problem that I have when it comes to Kathleen Kennedy is that things are being treated way too carefully. In fact, you guys may recall Chewbacca literally ripped off the arm um, in that scene on The Force Awakens that got completely cut off. That was another dismemberment situation that JJ had created that Kathleen Kennedy demanded to be deleted. You guys may recall. Um, and when you look at things like this, everything related to that is how, in a way, it does kind of grow the character. It kind of shows the character's weakness and how they kind of carry this, this injury along with them. To kind of, it's almost like symbolism when they lose the limb. And that's what I like so much about it. When you watch Anakin losing, you know, his arm in the attack of the clone scene against Dooku, it really is a foreshadowing of what's to come in Revenge of the Sith. The same exact thing goes as follows when it comes to Luke losing a hand. It really was quite poetic when Darth Vader lost the same hand by Luke himself at the end of Return of the Jedi. It's just a cool you know, uh, parallel and something that's very poetic in Star Wars is what I like about it. It's not just the basic thing of a character just losing a limb. It's the symbolism of it all that I like. So overall, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.